Hello, uh, I'm Harrison McLeod. I'd like to welcome you to this, uh, this unusual uh, Rector's Report for our 2020 uh, annual meeting. Uh, as I reflect back over this last year, um, I can remember uh, we, we began our year with an incredible bicentennial celebration uh, for Epiphany and uh, everything was um, forward looking and hopeful and excited. Um, and we, we really anticipated so many wonderful things for the year unfolding. Um, and, and while I would say many wonderful things have unfolded uh, over the course of the year, who would have imagined uh, that, that this would be the format we'd be having our annual meeting uh, in our bicentennial year? Um, I can remember vividly uh, the, the Friday afternoon in March uh, when I decided we should suspend our services uh, for the remainder of March. And I, I really did that with some confidence that at the beginning of April we would be back together again. Um, certainly we all discovered that reluctantly um, we were, were still uh, with suspended services even, even through Easter. Um, it would not have occurred to me that we would not have our Easter services here under normal circumstances. And then we thought things would get back to normal at the beginning of summer when the weather turns warmer and people are outside. And then we thought things would be back to normal in the fall when school starts. And, and here we are now making alternate plans for Christmas uh, as we look forward and, and kind of wondering at what point uh, will we return to um, our full capacity of um, in-person worship services and, and um, no restrictions on Sunday school or youth groups or basketball or any of the other many programs that we offer. Uh, so many unanswered questions, uh, so many unknowns, and yet at the same time, here we are, I think, uh, faithfully uh, being the church that God has called us to be. And there are so many signs of, uh, of growth and vitality and wonder here at Christ Church. And I wanted to pause just a second or take a few minutes uh, and, um, and, 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 and describe some of those wonderful things that have happened um, uh, since we've been here uh, in this pandemic. Um, our, our faith in action um, area, our faith in action ministry area has really um, been a source of inspiration. Uh, at one point we imagined sort of closing down the hospitality ministry. Um, rather than having to close down the hospitality ministry, we just we changed the purpose of that hospitality and rather than just serving ourselves uh, wonderful meals uh, attached to particular events, we, we reached out to the community and we partnered with Project Host and uh, we have been able to, since uh, the beginning of April, um, uh, produce about 65,000 meals for the hungry around Greenville, South Carolina. And before the end of the year, um, it's expected that we, we will have uh, prepared 75,000 meals. So what an incredible story that is and how wonderful that, that we can reach out and, and adapt in a way uh, to serve our, our community's needs. Um, it was one of our particular bicentennial goals that we complete um, Joshua's Way. That's our real estate development over in uh, the Sterling Hope community. And, uh, that will be completed just within the next several weeks, uh, but certainly before the end of the year. Uh, that means that, that we, in partnership with Habitat for Humanity and other agencies around town, we've completed uh, six Habitat homes and four duplexes. Um, if you've not had the opportunity to drive down D Jenkins Street over in the Sterling community, I hope that you will and you'll notice a, a wonderful development where these houses are. And, uh, to imagine that, that just two years ago, uh, that was uh, just a vacant, overgrown lot uh, that we owned over there. And, and um, uh, we have been able to turn that into a wonderful housing development for, for six families plus those four duplexes. So how wonderful that is. Uh, I think that our, our hospitality ministry, our faith in action has just been incredibly inspirational and what a wonderful testament to God's work in our lives and in the life of our community that is. Our faith development um, ministry area has just um, uh, hit it out of the park. We have, uh, I think, 19 Bible studies. We, we have uh, prayer groups, centering groups, adult Christian education offerings, 
uh, children's children education offerings. We've, we've been able to produce um, uh, epiphany boxes, an advent box that you'll be able to pick up this next week, um, Sunday school curriculums that, um, uh, that, that have components to take home and do as a family. So, so even in the sense where we are uh, physically distanced from each other, we've been able to uh, creatively come up with ways to really draw ourselves closer together as individual families, uh, but also as the family of Christ Church. And so um, all the work that, that faith development has done to make sure that we continue to understand the story of God's salvation history and our particular place in it, how we grow as Episcopalians, how we grow as Christians, has just been phenomenal. And I, I couldn't be more pleased with, uh, with those efforts it would be hard to describe um, the, the monumental effort that it has taken our, our support, our business office, um, to, to get us through this year. Uh, not only have they processed uh, tens of thousands of normal um, parishioner transactions, bills to pay, statements produced, uh, those kinds of things, but they've, they've, they've skillfully guided us through uh, this pandemic with regard to um, um, the payroll protection plan loan from the federal government, uh, which we received gratefully that allowed us to continue to not have to furlough our employees uh, and continue to operate our ministry. Uh, we've gone through uh, an on-time and uh, successful audit with a new audit firm this year. Uh, so just the, the routine business of the church plus uh, the pandemic, the, the audit, and all the other things that have been unusual about this year uh, our business office has just done a remarkable job uh, of coping with the volume of work and, and, and the diversity of work um, that, that has been a part of that. So uh, we owe them a tremendous uh, debt of thanks. It would never have occurred to me that we would be uh, an online church, and yet I think since the beginning of, uh, uh, the beginning of March or mid-March when we started to um, um, have to suspend our services, we immediately... Uh, started to offer virtual services. Um, it's, it's almost laughable now when I think back to our very first service where uh, Kevin Mertens and I stood in the, in the chapel and we offered a celebration of Holy Eucharist um, with one camera and, and just straight through and uh, difficult to hear, the lighting was poor, uh, but, but it, it, was, it was the best we could do at the time. And when I look at that now and I compare it to uh, the, the quality and the quantity of uh, virtual offerings that we have for our parishioners now, it's just astounding uh, that we would have been able to get um, to where we are. And um, So our, our, our worship services online, um, now our, our worship services in person, uh, certainly we've had to adapt those, but I think I'm, I'm so pleased with where we are and, and look forward to, to more, uh, more of the same. Um, I think we're in a situation now where we'll always have uh, some, some part of our uh, worship life will be online uh, in addition to our in-person worship services. What, what began as really awkward sort of worship offerings, uh, weddings, funerals, baptisms, um, have really become wonderful and special as we gather together in smaller, more intimate groups and really have an opportunity uh, to recall what's at the heart of those services and to, to be with, with a family at a wedding uh, even when we're limited to, to 10 to 20 people. Um, it, it's such a beautiful, intimate service. And even those who join those uh, weddings or funerals or baptisms via Zoom uh, have described it as really a gratifying kind of experience and something uh, they'll never forget. Um, so what a blessing that has been. Our preschool was an amazing um, challenge for us. When we suspended our services, uh, obviously, we suspended this, the preschool as well and went through uh, a couple of months where we, we had no uh, preschool functional. Um, and we wondered at, at, at many points along the way how and when we'd be able to reopen our preschool. Uh, it really caused us to, uh, to be introspective and prayerful about the purpose of the preschool and how it's offered uh, because of our leadership uh, in the preschool. Uh, we, we have been able to, to reopen that uh, safely. Um, and I, I couldn't be more proud of a, a group of uh, teachers, faculty, the preschool board, who have been able to um, uh, define 
uh, wonderful policies and protocols that, that have guided us through a safe reopening. To my knowledge, we have um, no cases of, of COVID-19 being transmitted through the preschool. So I, I think that is a testament to uh, the, the, the care uh, and the thoughtfulness that our preschool put um, into place as they contemplated reopening. And that is um, really a success story this year. I, I couldn't be more proud of a group of people. Um, our resource development and communications uh, aspects of our life here uh, have just been, uh, again, tremendous. Um, you will have, I think, enjoyed the mid-year report uh, that our resource development put out this year. Um, and um, all of our stewardship information, uh, I think, has been really wonderful. It's sort of telling the story of our successes this year. Uh, and then, as I've gone through and talked about all of our virtual offerings, whether it's faith development or faith in action or worship, uh, none of that could have happened without our, our communications people here. And they, they have just done a tremendous job um, allowing us the opportunity to continue to meet together um, virtually while we can't meet together in person. And I think you'll agree that that has been a, that has been a true gift to all of us. So uh, I, I couldn't be um, more pleased. None of what I've described would be um, possible without... Um, without you, the parishioners. And so uh, I'd like to take a moment to, to thank uh, all of the parishioners, but, 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 but some, some individually. I think um, uh, Ben Horn and Ashley Reynolds have just been tremendous as our senior and junior warden uh, during incredibly difficult and trying times. Uh, they have had a steady hand, a, a prayerful and discerning presence uh, among us and, and have been a tremendous help to me personally uh, even as they've been uh, wonderful servants of our church. Uh, and then those who serve on the vestry. Um, this year, the, the four who will conclude their terms are, are Ann Arrington, George McCall, Norm McGivens, and Helen Winecoop. Um, those four have done a tremendous job for us over the last uh, three years. Uh, I think we need to pause and, and thank those who are uh, concluding their three-year term uh, and express our appreciation to them uh, also, our chancellors, uh, Cecil Nelson and Wade Culp, have done a, an amazing job this year, um, given uh, so many um, questions to be answered and, and um, uh, issues to address. They have been um, a, a real source of inspiration and strength to me, uh, as have been our treasurers, Dan Seaman and Chris Classing. Uh, they really are able to... Uh, help us as a vestry remember that the numbers really represent uh, our ministry and they do an amazing job sort of keeping us on track and informed so that we can make good decisions based on good financial stewardship. So um, I want to thank them. Um, it would be impossible to name all the volunteers uh, from the, the people who work down in the kitchen uh, serving the needs of the hungry here in Greenville, uh, those who help with worship, the altar guild, the ushers, the people who greet us on Sundays, um, uh, really everybody who, who lends a hand or offers a prayer or makes a financial gift to our work. We, we couldn't do this without you, and so uh, I really want to thank all of our parishioners. And then I'll always have a soft spot in my heart for the, our staff. Um, this is a group of people uh, who, who really give of themselves. They serve selflessly, tirelessly, faithfully, uh, they, they dedicate their lives to helping us keep our eyes and hearts focused on God's Word, on God's uh, purpose in our lives, and, and, and our direction in ministry as a parish. So um, it, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it. Uh, they, they are just a, a wonderful group of people, and I am so privileged uh, to be able to lead them. Um, again, I'd like to thank each of you as our parishioners um, for all that you do and who you are. Lastly, I'd like to return to where we began. Uh, we, we began this, uh, this year of 2020 as our bicentennial year, and we had gathered together a wonderful bicentennial committee uh, chaired by Marie and Spence Taylor. Uh, we, we imagined in many ways we would uh, reinvent the church and help us prepare for the third hundred years of our ministry. And as I, I look back over the course of this year, so much of what we dreamed about, we've actually accomplished 
even if the events we hoped for have not been able to take place yet. Um, they have been a tremendous, tremendous uh, group of people who have helped us in so many ways. And um, we, we certainly owe them uh, a debt of thanks as well. So thanks to the Bicentennial Committee for setting the stage for this year and actually providing us with a, with a clear vision about how we might move forward uh, into our third hundred years. And I certainly look forward to a time when we can gather together in person uh, and enjoy uh, the fellowship that we anticipated uh, in our bicentennial and uh, be able to thank those people in person. Uh, but in the meantime, I hope that you'll offer them your thanks. Um, to conclude, again, let me just say how privileged I feel uh, and I am to be the rector of this wonderful parish uh, and share uh, in this particular journey with you and with our church uh, and with our community. So uh, thank you for all that you do and thank you for who you are. And with that, um, I confidently and hopefully look forward to uh, the beginning of our third hundred years. Uh, God bless you and God bless our work.